Today we're making apple cider. It's a pretty hands-off recipe. You just quarter apples and then boil them with seasonings for a couple hours and then you have cider. So it's a pretty easy recipe. You can use apples from the store, but we have an apple tree in the front yard that's perfect for this. So I'm gonna go outside and harvest me some apples so I can make some cider. If you are going to buy some from the store, I recommend getting some green and some red so that you have a mixture of flavor in the cider once it's done. We have a red apple tree outside and there have been times in the past where I buy green apples from the store to go with the red apples from the tree outside to help with that mix of flavor. This is also a great thing to use kind of gritty textured apples for because that texture won't really matter. You're just getting the flavor out of the apples by boiling them for a couple hours and then you have cider out of it. This is also a great thing to make if you're having like a, a Halloween party or if you plan on hosting Thanksgiving or something like that because it is delicious. It's way better than any that I've bought from the store or those little like powder packets that you add to hot water. Fresh apple cider is way better. And what I usually do to make it an adult beverage is add some bourbon of the brown sugar variety and it is delicious. So good. It has this warm spice to it and it's hot and comforting. I call it fall in a cup. I highly recommend you try. It's very good. If you're going to be making it for like a party or a gathering that you're having, uh, this is the perfect drink because it is something that's really impressive and really good, but low effort. So it's not something that is going to take you, I mean, it takes hours for it to, to boil or like to simmer, but you're not doing anything during that time. You can just set it and kind of leave it there. So first things first, so let's get the apples from outside. Let's go. Okay, so I washed my apples. I brought I brought them inside and I washed them. Here they are, a whole bushel of apples. I am going to quarter them now. You don't have to peel them, so don't worry about that. That's easy peasy. And then I'm going to quarter them and stick them in this stock pot that I'm gonna use to make the cider in. You don't have to use a pot that's necessarily this big, but because I have a lot of apples, I'm gonna make a lot of cider. And then I just store it in quart containers in the fridge and it keeps for a couple weeks at least. We always drink it before two weeks it's gone by, so it could last longer than that and I just don't know, honestly. <laughs> if you don't wanna use a pot that's this big or make like this huge batch of cider, that's really easy. Just cut down the amount of water you use. It's kind of a ratio between the amount of apples you use and everything else that you're going to put in it. So if you have uh, a smaller amount of apples, just use a smaller amount of water and seasonings. So now I'm gonna to get to work on quartering these. Remove the stems. Um, you don't necessarily have to remove the seeds or worry about the pith or anything like that because you're gonna strain it when it's done like boiling and simmering and all that. So you're gonna get the seeds out when you strain it anyway.
right, so now that we have our apples quartered, we are going to add the water and the seasonings and then let it boil, boil simmer, simmer, not boil, for two hours. You can also add citrus. Usually people add oranges um, or you can do lemon. I wouldn't do lime, but oranges or lemon would be good for some acidity. I don't have any. <laughs> and I've made it without it before and it's perfectly fine, so I'm just gonna leave that out for now. Um, but if you have it, it's, it's really good to add. So however many apples you have decided to use, you're just going to cover the apples in the pot that you wanna use and by about two inches. So I'm gonna cover it with water. Sometimes it is hard to tell like if you're covering it by two inches because the apples will start floating. So all I do is just push, use my hand and push them down and then see how much water is on the top if, if they were all pushed down to the bottom. You don't need a whole lot of seasoning, but because I didn't count how many apples I actually used, I'm gonna guess I used like 15. I'm gonna put in three cinnamon sticks. I'll do two teaspoons of whole cloves, teaspoon of nutmeg, and then for sweetener, you can use brown sugar, which I use. You can use maple syrup, or you can make, or you can use honey. I'm gonna do a half cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna turn the heat on to high at first while I kind of stir this up a little bit. Make sure I distribute the brown sugar mostly so everything else is whole. The whole cloves and the whole sticks of cinnamon. I feel like a witch. An apple, my dear? We're gonna let this, I'm gonna cover it and let it come to a boil. And as soon as it's at a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat to a simmer and let it simmer with the lid on for two hours. Later. What we're gonna do now is take the lid off and mash up the apples. They're already pretty mushy from sitting, but you can see that when you squeeze them just a little bit, even more juice comes out. See like that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna strain this at the end anyway, so like having this kind of chunkiness is totally fine because it's gonna go through a fine mesh strainer. So it's not a big deal. I just take out some of the apples and smush them against a wooden spoon like this to get all that juice out. And then we're gonna let it simmer for one more hour and then it'll be done. Could also use the side of the pot because these are like, they're already very, very soft. So you're kind of just squishing them at this point. It doesn't take that much force. Like you can just go like this around the edge, like use the back of your spoon like this. Mush them on the sides of the pot, mush them on the bottom. You get the idea. Oh, it smells good. Oh my gosh. And then we cover it back up and let it simmer for one more hour. One hour later. It's been another hour. I'm going to now strain the cider. All I'm gonna do is get all of this apple chunkage out of here. Get all the liquid out of there and then just discard all of the apple chunk. We moved over here now. I just keep my finished cider in quart containers in the fridge and I write the date on top with a dry erase marker so that I can remember what day I made it and I know how long it's been in there. But like I said, it never lasts more than like two weeks because we drink it really fast because it's super tasty. So I got all the bigger chunks out of here. There are still some chunks, so what I'm gonna do now is just put my strainer over top. Actually, I think we'll get a smaller strainer. Hold, please. Okay, there we go. 
Oh, that's so nice. Okay. To cut down on the mess, I am going to use a ladle to just sift it into here. Just all of the cider. Because there's still some chunky bits in here in the pot, but I got all of the like bigger stuff out. This smells so good. One of the bonuses to making this from scratch fresh like this is that your entire house smells like fresh cider. <laughs> I actually forgot that and earlier when I started making it, I told my husband, it smells like a freaking farmhouse in here. It smells good, it tastes good, it is good. It's just good. So I got about four quarts total and now we're gonna try. It's still warm. It took me a while to sift it, but it is still warm, so. But it is good cold as well. Cheers. Oh, oh it makes me wanna curl up in a blanket. Mm. Oh, it's so cozy. It makes me think of Christmas morning in PJs or, oh no, we have a tradition of staying up until midnight on Christmas, Christmas Eve. This, oh, I want this on Christmas Eve at midnight. Ooh. Or when you stay out late on Halloween night and it's chilly. You wanna try? You could try. Oh, that's really good. Super, super good. So cozy. Huh? It's delicious. <laughs> Yum. And now I have four quarts of it. Yes. If you like this video or you learned something, give it a like. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.